Thanks for watching this video. This video will cover how to use the Digital Watchdog VMAX Remote Viewing app. After downloading the Digital Watchdog VMAX app and installing the information from your DVR and getting your DVR online, you are ready to remote view. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open our Digital Watchdog Remote Viewing app. Uh, you know, right now we're just listing one DVR. This is going to be pretty typical uh, unless you have multiple. But what we're going to do, just touch the DVR you want to view. It'll highlight and it'll turn gray. And then in the bottom left, you'll have the live button. So go ahead and press the live button and that will create our video feed. Uh, it will usually open in 16 panels for up to 16 channels for your DVR. For the cameras that you have, it'll occupy the screens. For the cameras you don't use, uh, such as ours 12 through 16, it's just going to display a black background with the Digital Watchdog logo. So here right now we have 11 cameras active. We're showing a live video feed. It's early, so there's not a lot of movement on there. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the different features. In the upper left-hand corner, you see your device list. That'll take us back to the menu. Over here on the right is the full screen mode. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, first, I want to look over this gray horizontal bar. This covers the different viewing types. First one we have is a sig signal camera. If you want to look at just one camera at a time, you can highlight that. Uh, to go back, just double tap your screen. Next one over shows four cameras. You can go four cameras at a time. Again, from there, you can just highlight and tap the one you want to watch. Double tap again. Next one over is nine cameras at a time. If you had nine cameras or less, you can use this. Next to this one is one plus seven. So you have one larger and then seven smaller ones. Next one over is 16 cameras. That's typically how it loads. And then the final one on the right is the two plus four. It kind of shows two larger ones, then four smaller ones. For this video, I'm using my iPad. It's just a whole lot easier to use on the iPad than it is the iPhone. Screen smaller on the iPhone, your thumbs seem to get in the way. I'm going to jump back over to our 16 camera and show you a couple different features. You can always, like I just tapped camera number two, or you can double tap that. That'll show a full screen camera. If you want to advance cameras one at a time, what you can do is you can place a finger in the upper left hand corner of the screen and another one in the bottom right. And then to go to the next camera, you'll keep your finger up here in the upper left and then you're going to drag the screen up. That'll advance up. Doing it again, camera number five. If you want to go to the previous camera, keep a finger in the upper left, a finger in the bottom right, and you're going to drag from the upper left down to the bottom right. There's four, there's three, and there's two. Going to double tap this to go back to 16 channel. You can also reorient or relocate your cameras if you want to. By just touching and dragging, you can make whatever order you want to on here. Usually you just leave it standard. It makes life a little bit easier. To reset them, you're just going to shake your iPhone or your iPad and uh, it'll reset itself. This comes in handy, like on the one plus seven. I'm going to drag back over here and we can make another camera larger. We can reorient them down in here. We want to blow up this one or we want to look at the kitchen again. And then you can just shake it again. Uh, sometimes it takes a few seconds for the cameras to reset, but that puts us back over. So I'm going to come back over here to the 16 cameras. And from here, that, that pretty well covers the top horizontal gray bar about different cameras to view. Uh, a special note, if you're sitting here and watching this for a few minutes, like typically your screen could time out, it'll go dark gray, 
and then it'll just shut itself off. So if you're watching this for a while, keep touching the screen, it'll keep the iPad live. So I'm gonna go over the bottom horizontal menu. I'll go over a couple of these. Always consult your user manual for this. It'll get into some more detail. Also, I wanna make a special note when we get to the setup, unless you're really understanding the equipment, uh, don't go into the setup menu because you can turn the DVR off, you can cut off the online viewing. But live, we're watching a live video right here. So whenever you wanna watch live, you can click and highlight live. Next to live is the search. This will allow us to remotely go back and view previous information. It will typically pop up, highlight this again, the little bar right here usually plays back the last hour. Uh, but you can also go back and search a little bit more, uh, seeing what's happened in the past. Uh, please review your user manual for this to get specifics on what to look at, uh, how to go back and search through the calendar and that sort of thing. It's always best to do it on premises and going from straight to the DVR because it just makes life a whole lot easier than using it remotely. So I'm just going to click back over on live. This will put our live video feed back up. Uh, again, the third one is the setup. The setup, we'll talk about the system, your recording setup, panic record setup, live stream setup, and the quick setup. Unless you're really knowing what you're doing, just Try to avoid that one because because you can mess the settings up very easily if you're if you're not really competent with it. To get out of this, press the done button. That'll take us back over to the live feed. Over here on help, you press help. It talks about the digital watchdog app. Uh, gives information to contact digital watchdog or the website with the support. That'll give some PowerPoint slides on how to use the equipment also. You want to get back out of that, click in the upper corner right there, uh, capture. Uh, it'll pop up, would you like to access your photos? You can click OK and you can take kind of screenshots of some stuff going on here. If you're going through search and you see something, you can click capture and save some of these pictures. I'm just going to click OK and it'll take screenshots of what's going on. Uh, if you have a setup where you're using audio for audio retention along with video, you can use the mic and speaker. Uh, next to that is a preset. That one's not even lit up right now. Uh, OSD and then Relay. These microphone through Relay really don't have to mess with. Uh, when you're using an iPhone, you have to scroll over to see these. Uh, but mostly for 99% of applications, you're going to use live and possibly search. But setup, help, and capture, those are all uh, little apps, little sub apps that help you out on there. So that pretty well covers the basics of how to use the Digital Watchdog VMAX app. If you have any further questions, you can give us a call here at A1 Security Alarms at 1-800-881. 2466 and we'll help you out as best we can. Thank you.